Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, What's New with K9. Uh, it's been a while since we did a video. I think the uh, last one I did was on uh, 019. Uh, so I figured I'd do uh, some of the features that have, have been developed since then and also did a, do a quick preview of uh, 021.3. Uh, no big features there, just mainly uh, bug fixes and a little bit of perf. So let's go ahead and take take a look at some of those uh, new things with K9. Uh, you may have noticed, uh, you know, of recent, there's a new colon here available in the pause view called PF. Uh, this currently displays, you know, whether or not uh, port forward is enabled on a given pod. So here on this pod, let's say. I want to do like shift F port forward and in the previous releases, you know, we all scanned for the uh, pod manifest and, it, you know, uh, expose, you know, all the ports that are currently defined, you know, on the containers for that pod. Uh, now, you know, some of you have uh, manifested interest in also enabling things that may not be listed in the uh, resource manifest. However, knowing that on that Docker image is actually other exposed ports that are not made available within Kubernetes. So in this case now, uh, again, this won't work here, but I can know if I knew uh, in that particular container, there was an exposed port, let's say 9090, I can now, I can now do a port forward on this directly and that will pass uh, validation uh, in K9. So, uh, you know, besides that, you know, business as usual, if I have a port here 80 and I could, uh, you know, specify port 8080 local and I could specify port forward here. So you can see now the status column change with an F indicating that this particular part is being forwarded as a port forward on it. Uh, so for all timer <laughs> K9ers, uh, yes, there is such a thing. Uh, you know, we used to go and we use the PF uh, command to kick kick you in uh, the port forward view. So change that uh, if I go now on the pod and press F, uh, show port forward. Now you can navigate directly to the port forward view, right? So in this case, we can see that we do have, uh, you know, port forward here available. And uh, we also see that these are a little bit different, uh, you know, from uh, the default, which I see is one concurrent, uh, one level of concurrency and uh, 500 requests, I think we send by default, right? So this has been customized for that cluster for that particular workload. Well, now we get to configure the awesome uh, Hey tool to allow us to benchmark on that port forward. So here I can hit Control L and I will now start the benchmark on that pod. So we can go look at the benchmark result uh, right here by pressing enter. And here I get to see that, you know, we were able to do the 2002 requests reporting uh, 200 OK status on that HTTP workload and the time. So again, uh, pressing enter here, we get to see the full uh, hey report. And I know here that, you know, on the, all of them, you know, uh, made it through. So the benchmark is indeed uh, valid here. All right, so no, nothing new here. This is stuff that we had uh, previously. Now, one thing uh, that is different here, and this is a 0.21.3 feature. If I was to kill this part here, again, this is part of a deployment. So, uh, you know, control K here. This will kill it, and now I can now fire off and view the logs as the containers come up. So in the old previous releases, you know, we used to put out an error, and then you have to go back into the log view in order to see what was going on. So this is now different. So if I um, split my screen here, let's try to put some load. So I now I've got a port forward here. Uh, let's do 10 requests on HTTP localhost uh, 8080. Uh, let's see where this came up. Oh, sorry, don't have a port for it anymore. Uh, let's do that again with failings. Uh, so 8080 
right? Since I shot the part in the head put forward went with it. Uh, so now if I go back and look at my logs and I should be able to see those two requests, those 10 requests uh, being made here. Now, another feature that is available is the ability to mark. So notice here, you know, I've got some logs and then I can issue a mark here. That's basically, again, that's old school, you know, logging type stuff. Instead of pressing uh, return several times to see new incoming logs, we can actually set up a, a, a separator here in the log view. And then again, if I hit the Hey tool, now we can see the difference between, you know, one request or one set of requests versus another. So small potatoes, but kind of handy here to see especially if you try to track uh, specific calls on the service, you can actually get a uh, segregated view. Again, uh, this is something you can achieve as well with, you know, the one minute log or five minute logs or 15 minutes logs and so forth just as well. Uh, all right, so this is that. Uh, the other command that I want to show you guys, uh, which uh, that one I kind of dig, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, you know, there was a lot of issues found on the repo uh, folks saying, you know, I want to stay in K9. You know, why do you get me to shell out uh, to deal with manifest and so forth? So here I'll introduce the dir command, uh, dir directory command. This allows me to dig into a specific directory. So you can see here uh, on my uh, local uh, home here, I've got a directory uh, called K8 for with various uh, Kubernetes manifest. And without leaving the confine of K9s, I can actually go in and uh, you know dig in directly into those manifests. So this is a live view, just like any other view. So here, if I did, uh, uh, you know, if I created this directory, I don't know, Fred or something, uh, we'll see. You know, that view here is updated with Fred in it. There's nothing in it right now. So enter to dig in, escape to bail out. And uh, likewise here, I've got a service directory, and now I can use commands like apply. This will apply all the manifests that are currently contained inside that directory. Uh, likewise, I can delete, uh, you know, uh, again, this does not delete the file, this deletes all the resources that are defined within the directory or manifest, so that's kind of handy. Uh, so let's say here, if I wanted to go look at my nginx uh, deployment here, uh, let's say in this nginx here, I can actually view uh, the deployment YAML. So this will show me all the resources contained in that deployment, as well as edit it. If I wanted to, you know, change some stuff again, this will pop you in your favorite editor. In my case here, it's VI. Uh, you can configure that via the editor or K9's editor uh, environment variables, right? So now that's kind of handy. Uh, so I think it's kind of cool to be able to, uh, you know, apply various manifests and modify your manifest directly within K9 instead of having to uh, bump out uh, to the another shell. But uh, so this is something that you guys have requested, and I think uh, it makes a lot of sense to do so. All right, so if I went back here, another thing I want to sh show you here. We do have, you know, pods now that are configured and deployed. Now, let's say I want to look at config maps, right? If you had noticed, you know, one of those manifests uh, created the busy, uh, you know, uh, config map here that is available on the cluster. So now I can uh, introduce a new command. Uh, you see it right here, use by you that allows me to check who actually uses this particular config map. So if I press U here, we'll see that now we're going to get variety of resources that are references that, that config map. So in my case here, I've got uh, two deployments and one stateful set, right? So just to make sure I'm not, uh, you know, on crack or anything, let's figure out whether that's true, right? So if I go and dig into the uh, uh, YAML here for this resource, and look for busy, hopefully I find something with busy in it. Sure enough, uh, one of the environment variables for that particular uh, resource is being provisioned via the config map, in this case, busy, right? So I can validate that. So kind of handy, uh, especially on larger clusters, you may have a lot of dead resources out there, uh, be able to check 
you know, whether something is still being used or not uh, is kind of handy. So likewise here for the stateful set, I know that this particular stateful set uses that. So again, here, if I went back to the YAML and look for that BZ config map, let's see where that came out to be. In this case, it's actually being mounted as a config map volume on that particular uh, stateful set. So again, uh, kind of a cool uh, feature to allow you to track those references and make sure uh, you know what you have is actually uh, you know used in a cluster or not. Right. The same thing uh, applies to secret uh, to uh, uh, service account as well, uh, and also persistent volume claim. So here I've got a persistent volume claim called Web. Uh, you know, if I look at you again here, we can see that this is referenced by two different things. So one is a deployment, one is a stateful set. And again here, if I went to the stateful set, look at the YAML for it, now looking for web, hopefully we'll have here a, a reference to a, a present volume claim mounted as a volume on that particular pod uh, with the claim name, which is web. Right, so again, uh, I think it's really useful. Uh, you know, I hope you guys dig uh, this feature as well. Uh, last thing I want to show you is related to nodes. Oop, uh, what node? Sorry. Uh, so here, you know, again, kind cluster, I've got uh, one master and three workers on that particular cluster. Now I can go in, so here using the s shell command, I can actually can shell in to any of the nodes on my cluster, right? So this allows you know me to go in and look at specifics, you know, on that node, uh, you know, figuring out you know configuration uh, things or you know diagnostics type stuff, you know, on that particular node, right? This is actually powered. I'll show you here. Uh, this is actually powered by this uh, new pod here, K9 Shell, that we launched on your behalf to be allow you to shell in. And this allows you to, in essence, t uh, tunnel in to any nodes on your cluster, right? So there could be some security, uh, you know, uh, uh, repercussion on this. So that's why we made that available only on the feature gate. So if I look at uh, my home directory here, k 9 file, and I look for the kind cluster configuration specifically, we can see that there's a feature gate here, no shell. This guy would be forced by default. So by default, you don't have access to this, right? Furthermore, if you do like this feature and want to use it, uh, you, we also give you the ability to specify your own Docker image. Uh, a lot of time, you know, you have affiliation for certain uh, tools you want to use. Uh, again, this will vary cluster by cluster. So here you can burn a Docker image and then reference that image within that K9 shell pod. So that now you have access to all the tools that you're familiar with when diagnosing uh, your cluster. So I think that's uh, pretty handy to have. Uh, in, your, in your back pocket. Uh, okay, I think uh, that was pretty much all I wanted to show you guys on the, uh, this video. I hope you find it useful. I also would like to thank each and every one of you for listening and also supporting uh, k -Nines. You know, it's uh, not easy uh, being an individual contributor, you know, in open source uh, landscape. I know I do get help, you know, once in a while with PRs. Uh, but, you know, it is uh, a lot of work and, you know, I do want to thank everybody here for uh, their kind uh, comments as well as their sponsor, uh, GitHub sponsorship. I think, you know, all of this are fuel to help me, you know, move forward and spend more time, you know, on k So I do appreciate uh, all of those contributions. Uh, all right. That's it for now. I thank you all. Uh, also, be safe out there in those very dires of time, and I will catch you back on the next episode. Thank you so much. Bye.